Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where survivability meets ingenuity. Earlier I had set up this unique apparatus of a projector projecting our survival drill and build apparatus. It's almost like the same thing as the creative mode, but this one will use the materials that you drill in order to build the tunnel. As usual, I'm starting out with my small conveyor on this build, and they run the entire length of the chassis. This helps to ensure that materials are picked up and deposited to the correct devices, such as your survival kits and your medium cargo container from the drills. There we go, that should do it for those. Now I just have to make sure we get the internal workings first before we start doing the external workings. Otherwise it makes it pretty difficult to find them when you're using a projector. Inside of here there's a few conveyor tubes that are connecting these hydrogen engines. And yes, for survival mode, I've made this capable of running hydrogen generators instead of using nuclear power since it is quite difficult to find uranium sometimes in survival mode. And everybody, for the most part, can find ice to start out with. These are your large conveyors, which connect your welders to the conveyor blocks. And the conveyor blocks are arranged in a specific way to allow the ore to go to one survival kit in the back, which will refine it to steel. And then the forward survival kit is connected again through the large connectors in order to provide those steel plates to be welded. Here I'm just trying to use up resources that I'm holding on to because you know in survival mode you have to continuously go back to an assembler to get more components. Unlike creative mode where you can simply weld and it automatically puts it together without having to have all the components on you. Just like the original, there are two spotlights in the front. We have two welders pointing downward. We have four upper drills and we'll have four lower drills. And then we have two horizontal welders. See if I'm missing anything around here. That's one survival kit, and here is the other survival kit. And then I've also added these additional support arms on the side, which will later have gear wheels connected to them. This will keep you in line when you're going through the tunnel. So there's no need to babysit the machine, but you may want to periodically check it once in a while to make sure that your gravel is not building up too much or you're overfilling your survival kits. I have moved the cab to the back of this instead of the front of it, but it is in line so it does not interfere with the height of the tunnel itself. Then you do have this connector on the back, so if you need to dump gravel into another machine, you can. When it comes to doing these welders, as a note, before you complete them 100%, I would make sure that you go in the cab and shut them off. Otherwise, when you're flying around them in survival mode and you touch them, they'll probably kill you because they'll try to weld you instead. That 
that's all for upper drills. The side welder. And I think we have a lot of the items that are internal at least started. There may be a few conveyors here and there that I'm missing, but we'll go back and fix it. Here's one of the hydrogen engines. Make sure it's connected on the inside. This O2 generator is not quite finished. I'm going to need a few items for that. A few items for the survival kits. But it looks like the medium cargo container is done. There's that. Then just make sure these conveyors are connected on the inside. Gonna need more supplies probably. This is a fairly intricate build and there are a lot of items to make sure are connected in order for it to work properly before we shut off the projector. For the most part, when I'm, for I'm using a projector in survival mode, whatever materials I have on me, I try to use those up and then go to the next stage of the material that I need. So if I have a lot of steel plates on me, I try to do everything that requires the steel plates before I stop and go and get another component. This also allows where you can set up the build operations in your assembler to have all the other items building while you're constructing the vehicle itself. These top blocks here are really just cosmetic and to prevent any damage that might happen to the top. Say if you miss a stone and it hits the top of this machine. As I mentioned, after the welders are built, I go in, make sure that they're, they're cycled off. So if we fly around them, it doesn't take us out. Altogether, this build should take about 30 minutes. Make sure you get all the internal workings. There's an antenna that lies behind these blocks. I don't think I added a remote control to this design, but if you wanted to add a remote control, you could always do that and it would be pretty much self-sustaining. All you'd have to do is remote in, start the machine and watch it do its thing. Might buy you some time also to be able to get one of the tunnel rovers to go in and collect the gravel by connecting to the connector and following it in the path. That way you can easily offload gravel and you're not worried about it overflowing and having to stop the machine. There's one survival kit complete. Just gotta break this block to try to get the other one. There we are.
All these exterior blocks are not necessary if you want to save on resources initially. They're more of an aesthetic use. There is another small conveyor inside of here behind these other blocks. Make sure to get those, otherwise if, say, you're digging on the moon and there's no oxygen, it's going to be hard to pressurize that cockpit. But with it connected, it directly draws the oxygen from your O2 H2 generator, the same one that's used for the hydrogen generators. There, that should do it. Make sure it also turns green. If the lines on the conveyors don't turn green, then we must have missed something. There, I think that did it. Yep. Looks like we missed this generator on the bottom though. I think that's all the conveyors. It's a little bit tricky when you're looking at a projector, so you may have to destroy and rebuild the block, but don't worry, you're not losing material because you'll take those materials back when you use your grinder. Overall, it's a pretty fun build and can be used in several different ways, depending on the tunnel design that you use for it. Missed the other conveyor here. Yeah, they're all green. Covered it up. It does take quite a while to fill in all these half blocks on the outside, but it does make it look a lot sleeker in the game. Also, if you want to change the color of it, you should just be able to easily change the color as you're building. I basically use the standard gray blocks or gray coloring to match the theme of the game. Also, my platform is currently gray, and it kind of makes it subdued, I suppose. Inside of here are all your small batteries. These small batteries are hidden away, but are the powerhouse essentially for the machine. They run the entire length on the left side and the right side of this machine. It's not necessary to have these many batteries per se, but in survival mode, I find that if you run out of ice, at least this machine will still run quite a while without having to have ice added to the system again. And just like the creative mode version of this, we are using a rotor drive system. I intentionally use the rotor drive system instead of gear because the rotor drive, I think, holds your altitude or height 
a lot better than what the gear does. Since they're a direct stiff drive and you continuously propel them without having to set an override or anything like that, you simply turn them on and set the speed that you want. It makes it for a lot more accurate drilling compared to using gear. There, that should be all the batteries. We just need to fill in the rest of this, finish the rotors, and eventually put the lower drills on. Overall, it is a fairly quick build, as I mentioned earlier, and it's not that complicated. On this projection, all the settings that are required are already set except for the gear themselves. Looks like I messed those two front blocks up. Seems to be different than the rest. Better change those out. There we go. Just a few blocks left here and there. Missed the inside one. All right. Doesn't look too bad from this point. For the wheels, I'm using three by three dual wheels on each rotor. They should go on fairly easy, but sometimes I mess up like this and put them on a bit crooked. I used a 3x3 because I have adjusted the setup for my welders. If you use 2x2s, it'll sit too low and the welders will drag on the ground you're creating. All right, just got to recharge myself. Remember, in survival mode, to watch your energy because if it starts dwindling, so will your life.
You could also do this drive system with one wheel, but I find you get a lot more traction if you have two wheels on these instead. And it keeps the machine from trying to wander left or right as much. Then I'm using 3x3 three three gear on the side as well. And when it comes to the settings of this gear, I set them to 80% strength, 0% power, and the height offset is naturally set at the range we need it at. I find it doesn't really matter if you put the left side on the left and the right side on the right. So if you just use all right gear or all left gear, it's all the same because these gear are not propelling you. They're just keeping you in line. There, that should be it for that. To lower this so we don't just smash into the ground, I'm adding four pistons and a few blocks underneath to stabilize and we'll slowly lower it back down and then we'll raise the pistons up, which will allow us the perfect height to lower the rotors directly onto the platform. This prevents any damage or anything, especially in the gravity field. Otherwise, if we were just to simply disconnect it from the projector arm, it would smash into the ground and we'd have to start all over, or at least fix the damage that we incurred. And that should do it for those, just need to lower them. Looks like I missed some corner lights. Yeah, right here. I think that's it. I didn't see anything else on the list. Nope, looks good. All right, time to cut this down and then we'll lower the pistons. We have a little wobble, but it's not too bad. For your main rotor that you had the projector on, you want to ensure that you do not have the shear inertia on when you disconnect the build. Because there are several other rotors and pistons attached to this device, if you have the shear inertia on, it'll throw this like crazy. The first two times I did this, it destroyed the machine completely. These are the conveyors for the lower drills. You don't have to wait to end to put these lower drills on here, but I do because it's more convenient to have it on the ground and put the drills rather than having it suspended in the air and having to connect everything, especially if something happens to those drill pistons when we disconnect it from the projector arm. Well, I think that's everything on here. Like I said, it's a pretty simple setup, but after we've done all these, since the drills weren't originally attached to the pistons on the projection, we're going to need to regroup those. The lower drills are not going to show as the upper drills did. It goes for the same thing when you use hinges on a build on a projector. Let's see, oh, those drill pistons are correct still. Don't need to change that. With the left drive, make sure all rotors from the left drive are connected. Yep. And then the right drive, 
See if they're all grouped together still. For the most part, it looks like it. Then your gear. And this gear is all connected together and set at the same rate. The welders, since all four welders were still connected in the projector, they should be good. All right, now if we go to the G screen, I'll show you how the controls are set up. Number one is left drive lock unlock. Number two is left drive reverse. Number three is right drive lock unlock. Number four is reverse. Number five are your welders. Number six and seven, turn your left and right drive on and off. And number eight is to turn the drills on and off. Well, as always, thanks for watching. And I hope you leave your tips and tricks in the comment section to share with everyone. I appreciate it.